Hello everyone and welcome to the site of one of the most famous cities in the Bible from the first century, Nazareth! <laughs> Today we're going to show you all the most famous sites in the city and if you have any questions just raise your hand at any time. Oh, yes? Uh, uh, how did people go to the bathroom back then? <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, we've got one of those on this tour. What the heck is that? Uh-huh. We might need some help here, sweetie. Here, give this guy a call. I'll keep this French fried fool busy. I'm a diva Nazareth, Nazareth, Nazareth. I'm a diva Nazareth, you fundies it's him. Yeah, okay, singer boy. I know who you are. You're Renee Psalm. Non-scholar, non-archaeologist, and mental health professional. And a piano teacher who thinks he's proven that Nazareth didn't exist. And who thinks the scholars who say it does exist are in on some vast conspiracy to hide that fact, right? Scholars brainwashed and insane. Do da, do da. Scholars brainwashed and insane. Ooh, do day, do day. Right. Now, tell us again, why is it you think that scholars are covering up that Nazareth didn't exist at the time of Jesus? I mean, after all, as you admit, very little of it has even been excavated so far, because the modern city here is on top of it. Roman era, evidence, 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 no Roman era, evidence, evidence. Say what? Sure there's Roman evidence, what are you talking about? Yeah, not all of it is reported in primary scholarly sources, but archaeological scholars say that <laughs> Scholars are a bunch of careless hacks, careless hacks, careless hacks. Scholars are a bunch of careless hacks, they should be ignored. You know. Ah, great. It always does come down to that, doesn't it? Alright, explain why scholars are careless hacks. Give me an example. Richmond called Lemps Hellenized, Hellenized, Hellenized. Richmond called Lemps Hellenized, clearly they were not. Ah, uh, yeah, that's stupidity. You're referring to a 1931 report by Nazareth excavator Ernest Richmond describing six oil lamps. In that report, Richmond describes the lamps as Hellenistic, but of course they were actually Roman. No real expert falls that up, falls that up. Falls that up. No real expert falls that up. Richmond falls a hacky Uh, hold on there, cowboy. I know that's one of your favorite examples and how you say it's proof Richmond was a foul up. And I know how you love to make issues of things like this to create some idea of an entire network of conspiratorial silence and fabrication, both by Richmond and his scholarly successors. But you're wrong from the get go. Sure, those lamps are from the later Roman period, but you could have gotten a clue merely by noticing that there were about 30 or 50 years between Richmond's report and the reports you used from others to get later dates for the lamps. What we have here is a case of development as more information came to the fore in later excavations. Insulting Richmond by implying that he lacked expertise misses the simple point that he didn't possess 30 or 50 years of additional knowledge that would have better informed his judgment. In fact, up until the 1950s, general classifications like Richmond's were the best that could usually be had. There wasn't enough data to make more precise judgments. So sorry, Renee. Instead of impeaching Richmond and other scholars, you just showed yourself up as an incompetent.
So that takes care of you, Renee. Your entire case relies on dismissal of real scholars, whose work you dismiss based on falsehoods, half-truths, and spin doctoring. So that means you can... Oh, look who's here to take over. It's one of the world's leading experts on Nazareth, Dr. James Strange. Hey, Doc, you seen this guy's book? Scholar's Edition! Why, you little piano-playing poltroon! Yeah, that's what usually happens when conspiracy theorizing meets sound scholarship. 